Hi guys, it's Vanille and welcome to today's video and welcome to another WWE reaction. This video was recommended by Aura Ashen and he said, I would like a bell to bell with Jeff Hardy. I would be very happy and grateful. All right, all right, there you go. I actually did find the video by Tap Out Corner. This reminds me of Honest Trailer intro. Oh, sorry. Jeffrey Nero Hardy was born in Cameron, North Carolina in 1977. From a young age, Hardy had a love for action, as he took part in extreme sports like football oh, and yeah. motocross. But it was yeah. wrestling that quickly captured his attention. Jeff grew up watching WWE, with his favorite wrestlers being The Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, and Shawn Michaels. Jeff's childhood sadly wasn't all good though. He and his brother Matt lost their mother to brain cancer when Jeff oh. was only 9 years old. Oh, this didn't stop sad. them from pursuing their passion though, and the Hardy brothers began wrestling in their backyard and even held their own shows. As they grew up, <laughs> the Hardys learned more and more and started wrestling for small companies around their area. Thanks to a combination of their hard work, some people they knew, a bit of luck, and a little lying, Jeff Hardy was given a huge opportunity. WWE was hosting a show in lying? Ohio and they Did needed an lying? opponent for Razor Ramon. Ramon's original opponent backed out on short notice and a 16 year old Jeff Hardy was asked to fill in. Oh, so Hardy young. agreed, but claimed he was 18. Under the impression <gasps> that he was an adult, WWE lied. let Jeff Hardy compete, leading to Hardy's first WWE match. In the main At event of 16, Raw, Jeff Hardy, wrestling under the name Keith Davis, oh took on God. future Hall of Famer Razor Ramon. The match began with Razor kicking Hardy in the gut and backing him into the corner. Yeah, he Ramon does then not whipped Hardy across 18. the ring, and while Jeff tried to make a comeback, the charismatic enigma was no Maybe, match actually. for the bad guy's strength. Razor Ramon then started stretching the young Hardy and wasn't yeah, taking the match too seriously. Razor even lifted Jeff by his pants and started attacking him in the corner. Ah. An elbow to the face sent Hardy back to the mat, and the bad guy followed that up by slamming his opponent into the turnbuckle. Oh my Jeff's God. lifeless body was then hoisted up to the top and sent crashing down with a belly-to-back suplex. Oof. Finally, Ramon signaled for the Razor's edge and planted the 16-year-old wrestler on the canvas and ended the match. The backstory of how Jeff Hardy got put into this match is a lot more interesting than the match itself. It was a squash, which can be fun, but this is just dull. There was a lot of time spent with Razor Ramon just taunting Jeff Hardy, and it wasn't that interesting. But imagine telling fans in 1994 that this Keith Davis guy would eventually become one of the most popular WWE yep. wrestlers of all time. We imagine. got a little ways to go before that, however. Yeah, After his course. WWE debut, Jeff Hardy would spend the next few years doing more of the same. He was used as an enhancement talent and would lose to more established stars. Jeff's brother Matt was doing a very similar thing at the time as well. It wouldn't be until 1996 that the Hardys would start tagging together in WWE. Nice. They still lost most of the time and were used to make other people look good. Finally, after about five years, <laughs> both Jeff and Matt would be given a chance. So cool in 1999, the brothers were given what a new is with the hair, as well as a manager, <laughs> former Freebird member Michael Hayes. Okay. The Hardys finally started to pick up some victories and began an iconic rivalry with a group called The Brood, which consisted of the Edge, Brood. Christian, and Gangrel. <laughs> Things got even better when the Hardys captured the tag team titles by defeating the Acolytes in July 1999. While they dropped the belts back to Bradshaw and Farouk a month later, it was an encouraging start. Eventually, Jeff and Matt got rid of Michael Hayes and joined forces with their former enemy, Gangrel, and they started calling themselves the New Brood. It was Not a short-lived group though, as the Hardys had their eyes this on someone so else cool. to guide their Here careers. They, look really they soon engaged cool. in a classic feud with Edge and Christian over Stuff the managerial sure. services like of Terry so Reynolds. Tight, the Hardys came awesome. out on the winning side of that battle and continued dominating the tag team division, now as Terry by their side. That was until she turned on Jeff and Matt oh, and joined oh. Edge and Christian. Yeah. It was probably for the best, as this opened the door for Lita to join the Hardys, and together Lita! they became known as yeah, Team she's... Extreme. Oh my god, now she actually by their fits side, this the so Hardys well. continued to put on spectacular matches, with stellar showings at SummerSlam 2000 in the first oh. ever TLC match, and an all-time classic at WrestleMania 17 against Edge and Christian and the Dudley Whoa. Boys. During these brutal matches, Jeff became increasingly oh known my god. for his high-risk moves, yeah. and fans loved him because of it. After spending about two years that teaming with his painful. brother, Jeff was given a shot as a singles wrestler in 2001. He quickly became a fan favorite, as well as a title holder, when he defeated Triple H for the Intercontinental Championship. Unfortunately though, he lost it right back to the game just a few days later. 
Luckily, Jeff Hardy picked himself up and captured the hardcore title from Mike Awesome and battled Rob Van Dam in a series of memorable matches. During all of this, Jeff and Matt were still a tag team, but signs of tension began to appear. This caused them to fight each other at Vengeance 2001 with Lita as the guest referee. Jeff picked up the win after hitting the Swanton Bomb, but this storyline was poorly received by fans. WWE Aww. ended up dropping it, and Team Extreme was back together. Okay. Unfortunately for the brothers, their next opponent was the next big thing, Brock Lesnar, who had recently so debuted. So unfortunate. I feel Things like Brock Lesnar well debuting team. and coming to WWE ruined so many careers. <laughs> Well, not really, not really, okay? Like, the, the good ones stayed, and the good ones showed that they belong there. But he was such a force, such a force. Like, uh-oh, look who we have here. As Brock dominated the majority of the feud, including beating them in a match with Lesnar and Heyman as his tag team partner. After the storyline wrapped oh, up, yeah. it was time for the Hardys to officially split. Matt became Aww. part of the SmackDown roster, while Jeff would stay on Raw. The charismatic Enigma saw initial success after winning the European Championship from William Regal and found himself featured in prominent matches on Raw. One of the defining moments of Hardy's career, though, Ooh. was when he took on The Undertaker in a ladder match for the WWE title. Jeff showed a ton of nice. heart and came close to capturing the championship. Undertaker did retain his title, but Jeff Hardy had earned the dead man's respect in an all-time nice. classic Raw moment. Things were looking pretty good for Jeff, but in January 2003, we would see Hardy become a bad guy. He attacked oh. Rob Van Dam and Shawn Michaels, but this run as a villain only lasted about a month before mm. Hardy was back to being a good guy again. Sadly, though, in Even April though, like, if you think Jeff about Hardy it, like, the way he looks, you would immediately be like, oh, this definitely is not a baby face, you know? But at the same time, I literally cannot see him as a villain. Like, I, I don't know why. Uh, Look-wise, yeah, but personality and movement and character, nah. He's released from his WWE contract. The reasons given Hi. were no showing events, oh, the rehab, drug use, yeah. and that Denying Jeff refused to rehab, go to rehab. Yeah. Hardy would spend the next few years competing on the independent scene and later joining an upstart wrestling company called TNA. Yeah. Unfortunately, controversy continued to follow Jeff as he no-shown a couple of TNA events and was suspended and eventually released in yeah, 2006. Yeah, this is what happened. While the TNA door was shut, the WWE's door was open once again. And, and in August and 2006, seriously. Jeff Hardy returned to the company. He began feuding with the Intercontinental Champion, Johnny Nitro, and while things didn't work out at first, First, Jeff did eventually defeat Nitro and win the title. This rivalry evolved into a tag team feud as Nitro got his partner, Joey Mercury, involved while Hardy reunited with his brother, Matt. The teams faced off several okay. times between 2006 and 2007, with the Hardys coming out on top in most of their matches. Unfortunately, Jeff Hardy's singles career oh, would suffer as he yeah. lost the Intercontinental title to Omaga in February 2007. Umaga. But things quickly turned around for Jeff when he and Matt defeated four other teams to become the World Tag Team Champions. Okay. Their main rivalry as champions was with Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch. The Hardys defeated the two on a couple of occasions, only to lose the titles to them on Raw in June 2007. While the Hardys were still together, Jeff Hardy began to focus again on his singles career. He reignited oh, his rivalry no. with Umaga, who was still Intercontinental Champion. This time, Hardy defeated the Samoan Bulldozer and once again became IC Champion. But this is only the start of something <laughs> How bigger happy he for was, Jeff he was Hardy. Jumping there. He began being put in bigger matches so and didn't crumble power. in defeat. This earned him a number of contenders match for the WWE title at the Armageddon pay-per-view. Jeff Hardy's opponent was Triple H, and while the odds were not in Jeff's favor, he pulled off a big upset and defeated the game. This meant that Jeff would face the WWE Champion, Randy Orton, at the 2008 Royal Rumble for the title. The Viper decided to make it personal and brutally attacked Matt Hardy. Sadly, Jeff Hardy was unable to get his revenge and lost to Orton Aww. at the Rumble. To make matters worse, a couple of months later, Jeff Hardy not only lost the interview. To make matter worse, something happened with your mind, brother. For 60 days, yeah. even failing a drug test. It seemed like Jeff Hardy's yeah, career had nosedive, and it did. But like a phoenix, Jeff came back stronger than ever. Once Yay. he returned, the charismatic Enigma feuded with his former rival, Umaga, so and defeated him what? in an awesome Falls Count Anywhere match. Oh Jeff was then God. sent to SmackDown, where he'd be a contender for the WWE Championship. For the rest of 2008, Hardy would try and try to win the title, but came up short each and every time. It seemed like Jeff Hardy was just never meant and to be a so world champion. Too. At the 2008 Armageddon pay-per-view, Hardy got one more shot at the WWE title. He was part of a triple threat match involving the champion, Edge, and Triple Edge. H, and then it finally happened. What? Jeff he hit won? the Swanton Bomb, got the one, two, three, yeah. and one. Yeah. Jeff Hardy had finally made it to the top I'm and so became excited. WWE <laughs> champion. 
It was a fantastic moment and solidified yeah, Jeff Hardy that as must a top be amazing star. Against that? Hardy's first teleoffense was against the former champion Edge at the 2009 Royal Rumble. <laughs> During the match, Spear Matt Hardy really? came out to help his brother, only for Matt oh! to shockingly betray Jeff and cost him the title. No! After many personal attacks, Jeff Hardy finally agreed to fight his brother. Oh, yeah, the Hardys fought this each other at WrestleMania okay. 25, where Jeff Hardy actually Oof. lost. Matt Hardy would no also way. defeat him in a stretcher match as well. Finally, Jeff got his revenge at Backlash when he defeated Matt in an I Quit match. With that rivalry behind him, yeah. Jeff was right back in the title scene. On an episode of SmackDown, he defeated three other men to become Ring. the number one contender for Edge's World Heavyweight Championship. The two longtime rivals squared off at Judgment Day, oh. but interference from Matt Hardy cost Jeff his golden again? opportunity. Jeff Hardy thankfully got one Why more shot at Extreme Rules and finally again, picked man, up the big this. victory and became so World much. Heavyweight Champion. <laughs> However, this title reign was very short, as CM Punk CM used Punk. his money in the bank contract and defeated Jeff to win the world title. Aww. As you've learned, Jeff Hardy is resilient, and Hardy picked yeah, himself up back. and defeated CM Punk at Night of Champions to win back the gold. <laughs> For whatever reason, Jeff Hardy World Championships do not mix. At the next pay-per-view, SummerSlam, CM Punk defeated Hardy, and Jeff lost the belt What is again. going on? Hardy got his rematch on the following episode of SmackDown in a steel cage Sheesh. match. The fight had a special stipulation that the loser would leave WWE. In a heartbreaking moment, Jeff lost the match and was forced to say goodbye. Oh. In real life, the reason for this was to give Hardy time off to heal his body. Yeah. However, like in the storyline, Jeff Hardy really did not have a contract with WWE. Okay. This resulted in Hardy returning to TNA in 2010. For seven years, Jeff was one of the top stars in the company, winning their world title on three different occasions and nice. often being featured in major storylines. Of course, it wasn't all highlights for the charismatic enigma, as he continued oh. to battle drug and alcohol issues and infamously ruined the main event of Victory Road oh, 2011. No. TNA didn't give up on him though, and Jeff eventually reunited with his brother and later feuded with them okay. when Matt became Broken Matt Hardy. Both Jeff and Matt's TNA contracts eventually the expired in early 2017. Just like the last time, WWE welcomed Jeff and his Welcome brother back, back and they made a surprise return at WrestleMania 33. Yay! They competed against three other teams for the Raw Tag Team Championship. It was also a ladder match, so the Hardys oh. were legally required to win. Jeff and Matt were required momentum for the next few months, <laughs> defending and retaining they the titles on matches. several occasions. However, all championship reigns come to an end, and at Extreme Rules, so did the Hardys. Afterward, Jeff Hardy explored his singles career and even became the number one contender okay, for the nice. Intercontinental Championship, but was unsuccessful in his title Aww. match. Sadly, Jeff Hardy would suffer a shoulder injury oh, no. and needed several months off to recover. The charismatic enigma okay. finally returned in April 2018 and, and soon defeated the United States champion, Jinder Mahal, and won the title. Hardy had a solid run at the belt, holding it for exactly 90 days. He lost the U.S. Okay. Championship to Shinsuke Nakamura, ah! and to throw salt into the wound, Randy Orton came out afterward and oh. low blowed Hardy. The Viper and the Charismatic Enigma would feud for oh, the next yeah. couple of months, ultimately leading to a Hell in a Cell match that Jeff Hardy lost. The next yeah, few months would Randy. be pretty uneventful for Jeff. Oh, he would compete in big scary. matches like the World Cup Tournament, the Royal Rumble, and the Elimination Chamber, oh. but didn't win any of them. However, oh in God. February 2019, Matt Hardy made They're his back. WWE return and reunited with Jeff. Yay. Then, in April, I feel like they belong the Hardy brothers together. defeated the Usos to win the SmackDown Tag Team yes! Championship. As we know, however, Fine. Jeff oh, Hardy no. has the worst luck with title reigns. 21 Not days after winning the Tag Team belts, the Hardys Injuries had to vacate too. them due to Jeff getting injured. It would be yeah. almost an entire year before fans saw Jeff Hardy again. In no. March 2020, Jeff made his return on SmackDown, but unfortunately, the pandemic era had just begun. Yeah, Things that's got the back worst. On track Coming Hardy back at that time is the it worst. It started when the Celtic Warrior mocked Jeff for his history of addiction problems. This ultimately led to, ironically, a bar fight, which Jeff Hardy won. Hardy's next feud was with the Intercontinental Champion, AJ Styles. Oh my god, I would love to see this! To AJ. A week later, Jeff Hardy beat Styles and was once again IC Champion. Jeff would rather, oh, ironically, lose the belt in a ladder match, match involving AJ Styles and Sami Zayn. Soon after, Jeff Hardy would be sent to Raw as part of the 2020 draft. Oh, nice. He began a feud with Elias that ran through the rest of the year that Hardy oh. more or less won. In 2021, while Jeff was still popular with fans, he began losing quite a bit. It was mainly used to put over newer stars like yeah, Damian true. Priest I mean, and Karrion Cross. Ironically, this is exactly what Jeff what Hardy was doing as a teenager yeah. in the mid-90s. In October, Jeff got a new start when he was moved over to SmackDown. Things started out pretty good for Jeff Hardy, as okay. he won his first two matches on the brand and was part of Team SmackDown at Survivor Series. Everything seemed to be going fine, but little did we know that Jeff Hardy was about to leave WWE. 
Aww. On the November 26, 2021 episode of SmackDown, Jeff Hardy like, would compete in his top two WWE matches. The first oh, match of the night so was a tag team contest, which saw Hardy and Drew McIntyre defeat Happy Corbin and Madcap Moss. The charismatic Enigma even got the pin for his team. Later that night, an 18-man battle cool. royal was set up, with the winner becoming the number one contender for the Universal Championship. Jeff Hardy was one of the participants, and not okay. even he knew that this would be his last WWE oh, match. Oh no, that's his Before last! Before the battle royal actually got started, Jeff's former tag that's team so partner, unfair. Drew McIntyre, ran into the ring oh, with his my sword. God, Drew. Luckily, all it took was a commercial break, and when we came back, McIntyre was gone. Now that the battle royal was underway, <laughs> Jeff mean? Hardy's first target was Mad Cat Wait Mom. a minute, you can't just do that, bring up Drew McIntyre with a sword, and then go to a commercial break, come back, and if nothing has happened, then Drew is poof, gone. You, you, you can't do that. <laughs> what happened? I want to know. It's not fair. Jeff, who had changed his attire and gotten rid of his face paint, tried to eliminate Moss, but got attacked from behind by Rich Holland. Hardy then formed an alliance with Mansoor, but Holland overpowered both of them. After recovering, Jeff saw an opportunity and took it, and made the first elimination by pushing Jinder Mahal oh, nice. out of the ring. There was no rest for Jeff, as Shanky started shoving his massive boot into Hardy's throat. Oh. The charismatic Enigma stayed close oh. to the ground until he found an opportunity to get back at Shanky. Jeff wasn't able to do no much damage though, here. as Madcap Moss returned and began attacking Jeez, Hardy. To look at. Moss even tried to eliminate Jeff, but thanks to the chaos, to Jeff Hardy guys. was able to get away. <laughs> Hardy then laid low for a bit, but when he got to his feet, his old rival, Seamus, went after him. Oh, In a moment no. of pure luck, the Celtic warrior abruptly left Jeff Hardy and focused his attention on someone else. Okay. Jeff Hardy went back to the ground, and it became clear that he was hurt, likely due to having wrestled already. However, after returning from a commercial break, Jeff Hardy was not only on his feet, but he was inches away from eliminating Sheamus. Oh my Unfortunately, God. the Celtic Aww, warrior got the work. better of Jeff, and Hardy fell back onto the mat. Unfortunately, Happy Corbin break. saw that Jeff was wounded and decided <laughs> to try and eliminate him. Even though he was hurt, Jeff managed to stun Corbin just long enough to get back inside the ring. Hardy tried to go on the offensive and take out Aww. Ricochet, but that didn't go too well. Aww. With the battle royal coming to an end, the action started getting more Aww. intense, but Jeff Hardy couldn't do much. Realizing that it was do or die, Jeff Hardy had a burst of adrenaline and ambushed Happy Corbin and Sheamus. Hardy nice. hit Sheamus with a whisper in the wind, and Corbin with oh a twist God, of fate. Oh my god, an injured Corbin guy doing all of that? Corbin pulled a fast one and eliminated Sheamus, which and allowed Jeff to win Happy, and it appeared he won the battle royal. As yeah. Jeff Hardy was celebrating, Sami Zayn, who hadn't been eliminated, ran in and knocked Jeff out of the oh ring. My kind of a disappointing God, way to end the match, Sammy. but considering the way the storyline went with Sami Zayn, I think it worked fine. I mean, Talking too. about Jeff Hardy's last match, though, it made sense that Hardy didn't do much, considering he had already wrestled, but I think it would have been better if he played a more active role. The way the True. match was played out, Jeff Hardy just felt like another body in the ring, and I was honestly surprised that he lasted till the very end. Yeah. The commentators didn't even acknowledge when Jeff Hardy eliminated Jinder Mahal, which only adds to this feeling that Hardy wasn't really a big part of the Battle Royal. Aww. At the very least, it was cool that Jeff Hardy had his last match in front of his home state of North Carolina. Yeah. About a week after his match on SmackDown, Jeff Hardy would wrestle at a non-televised WWE event in Texas. Before I go on, I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't this be Jeff Hardy's last match? Yeah. Fair point, but on Bell to Bell, we only look at wrestlers' matches on TV. On TV, With that true. cleared up, Hardy was wrestling a three-on-three -three tag team match at the Texas show. In a very bizarre moment, Jeff Hardy just randomly left the ring and started walking through the crowd. This wasn't part of the show, and it made people wonder if Hardy was under the influence. So far, there hasn't oh been God, anything maybe. to suggest that Jeff was, but there still isn't any explanation but why, would why he do that? left the <laughs> Yeah, why would you Either do way, that? Either way, WWE sent Jeff Hardy home following the incident, and Rough shortly night. thereafter, they would release him from his contract. Mm. As of right now, Jeff Hardy is under a no-compete clause, which will expire in March 2022. While we wait for that, check out the first and last matches of the man puts the high in high flying. And that was 2022. Did we see Hardy after that? I haven't. I don't know. Is he back or will he be back? This was by far the saddest release in this recent release wave. Jeff will always remain legendary. One thing WWE is missing, what I have noticed so far, they don't know how to say goodbye to their wrestlers, to their legendary lesser wrestlers. They don't know how to like finish their story, give them an epic ending, say farewell with, in an epic way. That leaves questions. Maybe they do it on purpose because like we feel like something is missing and we want to see them back and maybe they can come back. 
And maybe that's why they leave like a space and a place for them to come back. So they don't want to like give them this epic farewell because then it would mean the end of that wrestler and you don't want to see him back again because you already gave him goodbye, you know? So I don't know if they do it on purpose, but I feel like really they don't know how to... Like the only person I can think of that got a really amazing goodbye was The Undertaker. And guess what? He still came back. <laughs> He still didn't finish and he came back again uh, from the 2018 WrestleMania. So like, this is the thing, like even if you give them like an amazing uh, goodbye, they still in a way can come back. Yeah, he's probably one of the greatest wrestlers in wrestling history. When I saw Jeff and other superstar chase for 24 seven title, I was angry. Aww. As far as I'm concerned, Jeff Hardy is a top 20 of all time superstar. He is a once in a lifetime talent, inspired so many future high flyers in the industry, which is so true. The star member of arguably one of the greatest tag teams of all time and encouraged so many young kids, teenagers, and even adults to just be yourself and not give a damn what the others think. Jeff Hardy will always be a personal favorite of mine. Such a shame that his personal struggles, I don't see the rest, but yeah. It's a shame with his personal struggles, but it is what it is, you guys. A lot of wrestlers have been going and dealing with their own demons. And if you don't know how to deal with that, it can affect your career. It can affect your personal life. It can affect you in multiple, multiple ways. It's really not the solution. It's the worst thing you can do to yourself and to your life. There is no one who dealt with any type of drugs and was like, fine, completely fine. Be like, oh, it's all right, it's all right. It was, it was like a highlight of my life. Like literally no example out there. But yeah, that is it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Bye!